Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are finishing up our biology and behavior lecture. We've made it to our last and final objective, which is about development. Now the developmental process, it begins at the moment of conception. Physiological changes are rapid from embryonic to fetal stages as well into infancy. Now children exhibit surprisingly consistent patterns of motor abilities as well as physiological changes that are based on age. And understanding these changes and understanding when they occur is important in the discussion of developmental psychology. Now we're going to start off this objective by talking a little bit about the development of the nervous system. This is going to be a broad overview. If you want more details, I would highly urge you to go check out the MCAT biology playlist. I believe it's chapter two where we discuss this in greater detail. Nevertheless, let's get started. The development of the nervous system, it starts with neuralation at three to four weeks gestational age. Now, neuralation occurs when the ectoderm overlying the notochord begins to furrow, forming a neural groove that's surrounded by two neural folds. Now, cells at the leading edge of the neural fold are called the neural crest, and they will migrate throughout the body to form tissues, including dorsal root ganglii, melanocytes, and calcitone producing cells of the thyroid. The remainder of the furrow closes to form the neural tube, which will ultimately form the central nervous system. Now this neural plate has an aller plate, this neural tube has an aller plate, which differentiates into sensory neurons, and a basal plate, which, which differentiates into motor neurons. Over time, the neural tube invaginates and folds on itself many times. The embryonic brain, it begins as three swellings, and that becomes five swellings as it becomes the mature brain. Now, prenatal development does not occur in vacuum, of course, but in the mother's uterus. Within this environment, things like temperature, chemical balance, orientation of the fetus with respect to gravity, and even atmospheric pressure are all carefully controlled and they remain relatively constant. The fetus is attached to the uterine wall and the placenta by the umbilical cord. The placenta transmits food, oxygen, and water to the fetus while returning water and waste to the mother. Now also, the maternal blood supplies many of the proteins and amino acids that are needed for growth and the embryo does eventually begin to develop them and produce them as well. Now, something important to recognize is that there are a variety of external influences that can have some negative effects on the development of the fetus. There are a number of viruses or bacteria that can cross the placenta and cause damage to the developing fetus. Also, an unfortunate side effect of the revolution in ph pharmaceutical development is that many drugs that could help the mother have damaging effects on the fetus she carries. So you have to be cautious of the medicine that you take during pregnancy. There's also a host of environmental factors and exposures that can also affect the, the maturing of a fetus. For example, Maternal malnutrition is considered to be a leading cause of abnormal development. In addition, protein deficiencies can slow growth. It can also reduce immunity to, disease, to, to diseases. Maternal narcotic addiction will also produce chemically dependent infants who are going to undergo severe withdrawal after birth. Regular um, cigarette smoking can also lead to slowed growth. It can also result in fetal heart, increased fetal heart rate and a greater chance of premature birth. In addition, you want to avoid alcohol. Daily use of alcohol is also going to lead to slowed growth, both physically and psychologically. So now, that we've covered the development of the nervous system and factors that can affect the fetus, let's talk about what happens when the baby is born, right? Although they may seem helpless, 
Infants are actually equipped with well-developed somatic structures and a broad array of reflexes that help ensure survival. A reflex is a behavior that occurs in response to a given stimulus without higher cognitive input. And while motor and startle reflexes exist in adults, infants have a number of primitive reflexes that disappear with age. For example, we have the rooting reflex. This is the automatic turning of the head in the direction of a stimulus that touches the, the, the cheek, such as a nipple during feeding. There's also other reflexes like the Morrow reflex. This, this um, is described as when the infant reacts to abrupt movements of their heads, kind of by flinging out their arms and then slowly retracting their arms and crying. And it's actually been speculated that this reflex may have been developed during a time when pre-human ancestors lived in trees and falling could have been prevented by some instinctive clutching. The Morrow reflex usually disappears after four or five months, um, and its continuation at one year is a strong suggestion of some developmental difficulties. There's also the Babinski reflux. It causes the toes to spread apart automatically when the sole of the foot is stimulated. And then there's also the grasping reflex, which occurs when the infant closes his or her fingers around an object placed in their hand. Now, infants will typically start to develop motor skills at about the same age and in the same order. And due to this pattern, most psychologists and doctors agree that these are innately programmed abilities for human infants. However, the educational richness of the environment has been observed to affect the rate of learning with, with more enriched environments, obviously promoting quicker development. Now, motor skills are actually broken into two classes. You have gross motor skills and you have fine motor skills. Gross motor skills incorporate movement from large muscles, uh, from large muscle groups and whole body motion like sitting, crawling, and walking. And then fine motor skills involve the smaller muscles of the fingers, toes, eyes, and they provide more specific and delicate movement. Finer motor abilities include like tracking motion, drawing, catching, even waving. Now, to kind of move away from motor now, let's talk a little bit about social development. In addition to motor skills, social development occurs in infancy and through adolescence. So at birth, the par parental figure, they become the center of the infant's world. Um, and as the infant ages, things like stranger anxiety and separation anxiety develop. And they, you, they usually develop at around seven months and one year respectively. Stranger anxiety, by the way, is a fear and apprehension of unfamiliar individuals, and separation anxiety is a fear of being separated from the parental figure. Now, during this time, play style progresses from, you know, solitary to onlooker, and at two years develops into parallel play, in which children will play alongside each other without influencing each other's behavior. Then at age three, a child has an awareness of his or her gender identity, they engage in gender-specific play, and they know their full name. By age five, conformity to peers and romantic feelings for other um, people begin to develop. Um, from ages six through 12, um, friend circles tend to be of the same sex without expression of romantic feelings. And then in the teenage years, children become more self-sufficient and they often express their desire for independence by rebelling against their parents. Cross-gender friendships also become more common and individuals also become more aware of their sexual orientation and sexual relationships can sometimes begin. Um, now, what we see here in this table I have drawn up is the developmental milestones of the first three years of life. So this is a general timetable based on averages. So most children will fall within plus or minus two months of the chart. The goal here is not to memorize the chart, 
But what we're going to do is we're going to read it and try to recognize some themes. So for example, gross motor skills progress in a head to toe order, starting with the ability to lift the head, stabilize the trunk, and then finally walking. And there's also a correlation between the development of motor skills and proximity to the center of the body with skills being developed at the core prior to extremities. Social skills also move from being parent oriented to self oriented and then to other oriented. So if we look at this chart here, at first year of life, what is the physical and motor development? Well, they put everything in their mouth. They can sit with support. They can sometimes stand with help. They can crawl. There's some fear of falling. All right. And then they have some sort of grasp. Social development, well, it's very parent centered. Um, issues of trust are key. They sometimes can have stranger anxiety around seven months um, and they play in solitary and they love, you know, pat a cake and peekaboo. Um, then there's language development. The first year of life, they, they can laugh out loud. There's some repetitive responding and they can start to begin to say some simple world, words like mama and data. All right. Then at age one, all right, what's, what is, the physical and motor development at age one, they can sometimes walk alone at 13 months. Uh, they can start to climb stairs alone about 18 months. Um, there's emergence of hand preference. They can kick and throw balls. Um, they can pat pictures in books and they can stack three cubes. What about the social development at age one? There is some separation anxiety. Um, there is still a dependence on that um, parent figure or parents figures, I guess, on look or play as well. And then um, for language development at age one, there is great variation in timing of language development, and they can usually use around 10 words here. What about age two? The physical and motor development at age two, there's high activity level. They can walk backwards. They can turn doorknobs or scribble with crowns. They can, you know, they've leveled up from stacking three cubes to now six cubes. They can some, they can stand on their tiptoes and they're able to aim the ball when they throw it. What about social development? They become a little more self-centered and selfish. They can imitate mannerisms and activities. They sometimes may be aggressive. They recognize themselves in the mirror now and know is their favorite word. How cute. And then for language development at age two, um, they can use pronouns. Um, parents understand most of what they're saying. Um, they can use now up to maybe 250 words and they can identify body parts by pointing at them. Then age three, what is the physical and motor development? Well, now they're really, you know, top tier. They went from three to six to now nine blocks. They can stack up up to nine cubes. They can alternate feet going upstairs. They have some bowel and bladder control. They've been, you know, potty trained. They can draw recognizable figures and catch up the ball with their arms. They can cut paper with scissors, although you still want to be watching them here. And they can unbutton buttons. As for social development, they start to have a more fixed gender identity. There's some gender specific play that happens here and they know their full name. As for language development, they can use up to 900 words. They can use, you know, they speak in complete sentences. Um, they can understand up to 3,600 words. Strangers can begin begin to understand them. So not, no longer just the parent understands them, but strangers can slowly uh, begin to understand them here at age three and they recognize common objects in pictures so again the main takeaway here is that you understand some of the trends that are happening here so again for gross motor skill progress it happens head to toe kind of order starting with the ability to lift head then stabilize the trunk and then they finally can walk there's also a correlation between the development of motor skills and proximity to the center of the body and then the the social skills they move right from being parent oriented here to being more self-oriented and then at larger ages to be other oriented Fantastic. With that, we have finally completed the first chapter in our MCAT behavioral science playlist. I really hope this first chapter has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. 
Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.